to ask, uh, just uh, like to ask you a couple of questions and, and hear what you have to say about the artist that you are. Okay, um, can you tell me um, about yourself, how did you get started, and how have you evolved as an artist, and was there any significant influence in your creative development? Sure. So I grew up in San Francisco, California. Uh, when I went to university, I went to Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, and I originally went to study industrial design because uh, you know my teenage self thought that I was going to design cars. That's, that's what I thought I was going to be doing. Um, industrial design is an art major, uh, so uh, my foundation classes included drawing. And I discovered a love of drawing, a love of making pictures. Uh, and then in my second year, uh, I explored even deeper and I met uh, a man named Judd Williams. Uh, he was my first, well, my first real deep influence as an artist. Um, he was a man of just filled with wisdom and joy and a love of art. And he was the first person who showed me that uh, a person could become free and, and, and like live and like think and feel at a high level. Uh, you know, with like, like I said, like with freedom and joy and uh, exquisiteness. Um, so he's my major, major influence. And throughout my undergraduate years, uh, such an influence that I moved to New York immediately after uh, I got out of school. And I lived in New York uh, for about 17 years with, you know, and I took uh, a couple years out to go to grad school in Boston, Mass College of Art. Um, and there I, I met many, I had many influences. Uh, my main professor, his name was uh, Tomas Vu. Um, but all of my professors there were like great painters and uh, they taught me so much about what it means to be an artist and to have a professional practice. And then when I got to New York, um, I just met so many like brilliant people and uh, I continued my growth and 2011 I moved here to Philadelphia and I just kept on going. biggest catalyst in my work um, I would have to say the first name that comes to mind is uh, William Turner the English painter um, he's a painter of space and not only is he a painter of space but he's a painter of space in physicality like you can see the brush strokes, you can see the, the physicality of the paint. Um, and clearly he was uh, looking at the sort of the mystical aspect of things. Like he saw air and light uh, and the landscape uh, as having like greater uh, like meaning. Okay, so yeah, William Turner is the first and then I would later discover many other artists. Uh, who would influence me, and, and there have been many. So, well, there is the influence of uh, artists who I admire, art artists who are doing what I always wanted to be doing. Um, and besides that, there's really it's just something that I've had with me my whole life, like a feeling. Um, something that I've been like searching for is like a hunger, like a hole, right? That I've been trying to fill for my whole life. So, um, the way that I make my pictures is that, like, I discover them. In other words, I don't start with an idea and then try to execute the idea. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a miracle. I'm hoping to be surprised. Um, I do have ideas and it comes from like everywhere, like books that I read, movies that I see, songs that I hear. 
and everything gives me ideas. I, I, I can't, I mean, you can't talk to me and me not thinking about a movie. And the same thing is true, I, like I, I can eat something and immediately I'll have a visual impression. You know, every sense awakens every other sense. And, and, and as it pertains to painting, uh, it awakens like visual thought. Um, and then when I go to paint, I just kind of uh, arbitrarily just sort of um, just spill, all, spill it all out. And I just do whatever, right? And sometimes I'm just reacting uh, like a wild animal to what I'm seeing. And I don't really think about what it is or what it means, and I just, I'm just feeling, okay? And um, eventually the piece will, will start to look like something and I'll start to realize that it, that it, it, it should become this. And then, and, then, and then the images that, I, that occur to my imagination start getting like more and more specific, more and more concrete. And at that point, uh, you know, that's when I like refine the picture and um, make it to what you, you know, you, you'll see in the end. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm looking around at this uh, Jurex exhibit here, and I am totally fascinated with your work, um, especially this one right here. Yeah, um, let me see if we could get a look at it. Yeah, uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So. It is a landscape, right? So that there's like some ground at the bottom here. And the thing in the sort of the lower left-hand corner, to me, it looks like water. And I painted it to look like water, um, but not, not in a very representational way, but kind of indicating water, OK? And, um, and, it, and that kind of water, it has a feeling, because it's painted with like black and green. So it's meant to have a specific feeling to it. Um, this piece, it has a lot of like, uh, it, again, you know, like it's not made to look like a traditional landscape. Like for example, like this is all a sky, right? And like these are kind of like clouds, these two horizontal uh, bands here, okay? Um, so I'm not trying to represent a cloud, but I, but clearly once you start seeing it as a landscape, all of a sudden uh, you can't help but think of this and this shape as a cloud. And you can't help but think of whatever's on this side as being the side where like the sun is shining. And here there may be like, it's kind of um, away from the light. Okay, which is, which is something that I started to see allowed to have happen and then I kind of amplified it and then I kind of talked to it. I talked to it so I say well what if you were, uh, if this square, like let's say it used to be green, I say well what if you were red and I'll, I'll paint it red and see how that makes me feel. And of course I'm aware pictorially what's happening, I'm aware of um, how the light marches across the surface and, and how that creates uh, the illusion of light without actually deliberately painting an actual sky. And in a way, I'm, I'm trying to push. I'm trying to push you uh, to see a sky or to see a landscape, um, but to paint some, but, but to paint in a way that is far from a, uh, a, tr a traditional sky as I possibly can. Um, and still make it look and feel like a sky. And again, why do you do that? I, why do I do that? It's, it's, it's for, um, well, it's for, to create a, uh, an expressive effect, uh, to create a sense of surprise. Um, you know, in the end, like, it should make you feel alive. Well, I'm trying to make me feel alive. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the explanation. It's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, because I really, I really, uh, I, I really enjoy that piece. All right, Albert. Um, what do you see as uh, what do you see in the future as for um, 
your long-term goals or yeah what's on the horizon what do you see sure your long-term goals sure um the progress of my art just keeps marching forward right so um I'm continuing to develop these spaces, and I, and I honestly hope to be surprised every time I do anything. Um, I mean, that would be my like the ultimate uh, goal is is to keep feeling, just like, as I mentioned a moment ago, to, to keep feeling alive uh, and to feel genuine, authentic emotion, uh, to feel my emotion, and. Um, Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny, like, because it, it looks like I'm making it like abstract painting. But to me, as, as time goes on, uh, I feel like the illusion is like falling away, like, you know, one, one, you know, one, one layer at a time. And to me, I, I just want to touch like, you know, like, you know, uni universal feeling. You know, like the like the like the bedrock of my feeling, which I trust is the bedrock of your feeling. All right, Albert, thanks a lot for your time, and we here at the City Arts Lot do appreciate uh, your participating in uh, what it is that we do here, um, and uh, we uh, we want to thank you. Thank you, and thank you for having me.